Now, we seem to find ourselves with an unusual sporting phenomenon on our hands. The England cricket team skittled out the Indians today to finish a whitewash, four matches, four English victories. They're now the best test match team in the world. Even more unusually, they're an England team that expects to win. But could they be even better? Could there be a big pool of talent which the people who run English cricket have just failed to tap? Safraz Manzur thinks so. He's taken it slip. What a start for England. This is a tale of two cities. In one part of Birmingham stands Edgbaston, establishment cricket English style. The genteel setting for many an epic cricketing contest. And he's got a thickish edge, that's going to race away. And the stately home of Warwickshire Cricket Club. Just a few miles down the road, cricket Asian style. A no frills version of the game. For almost 120 years, locals in Birmingham have been playing cricket on these pitches. 80 teams meet here every week during the summer to compete in one of England's oldest and biggest Asian leagues. Here, the facilities are somewhat basic. There's no changing rooms, there aren't any toilets, unless you count those trees, and no access to running water. Lately, things have gotten so tough that last year, the league even considered folding. Traditionally, English cricket sides need their own pitches if they want ECB recognition. But across the country, in many Asian leagues, players are using local councils' facilities, which means that many miss out on official funding and support. And some claim that lack of support explains why only nine British-born Asians have played test cricket over the past 10 years, and why last year only 27 British Asians were playing top-level county cricket. Why do you think there aren't more Asian players inside the test side than inside county cricket? I think it goes back to the uh, argument uh, that you used to get about black footballers in the 1970s. They can't quite, quite cut it, they don't have the aptitude, they don't have the attitude, they don't have the ability. What we need are some pioneers that will actually break through that ceiling for us. And the, the day we have the Hashim Amlas playing within the England team, and Hashim Amla is a devout Muslim, he doesn't drink, he doesn't wear any sponsorship that uh, reflects alcohol or gambling, the day we have that uh, kind of player playing within the England team, that's the day that we would have an integrated uh, English cricket team that reflects all the diverse cultures that make up this wonderful land of ours. What I think Warwick should miss out on is the uh, practical approach that football has where you have scouts even at the lower league grounds. We've got 13 games going yes. on. Is there anybody from the ECB around to check out who's playing? Absolutely not. You'll find there are players in this league that uh, have got the quality to sort of make it into the ranks of that type of cricket, but uh, no one's there to spot these sort of players. Uh, Why not? I don't know, maybe it's just a, a lacking uh, part on, on the behalf of the clubs. Uh, they're not looking in the right places. Do you think Asians are underrepresented? Yeah, um, well, I mean, look at the current England team. There's only one Asian guy in there at the moment, and he's, he's only a fringe player. Uh, you're telling me there is no other Asian player in the whole of the system that can play with the rest of the England team? Of course there is. Talk to the guys here and they'll tell you that English cricket is split between the middle class white genteel world and the working class Asian grassroots. Over in Edgbaston, the county cricket club has been involved in projects to try and reach out to the Asian league and officials insist that there isn't a cricketing divide in the city. I think cricket's a very inclusive sport and I think it's a very inclusive sport at all levels. Facilities that the Parks League have, they're not that great, are they? I don't think they've got any changing rooms. And... No, that's, that's, um, that, that's a big issue. The teams who play in the Birmingham's Park League aren't, aren't affiliated to the cricket board but nevertheless, we see that as a very, very important part of cricket. There are Asian cricket teams in inner cities across England. These sides are playing in Victoria Park in East London. Many players here caught the cricket bug from their parents. We felt, I suppose, more for, our, for, for the home country, for our parents' country, because that's where the passion came from, it came from our parents. Um, and, our, and our heroes growing up were Pakistani and Indian cricketers. So um, it, it, it was a passion for cricket, um, but not necessarily the England team. <laughs> the ECB recently spent almost a million pounds on building cricket facilities in East London. So will these efforts help the England team look less white in the future? I'd hope so. 
I think the, the first significant difference will be that we will establish and we will find good young spinners. There's a lot of evidence already we found that the kids who are around here are very talented and particularly in spin bowling. Maybe the real test of success will come not only when the England team looks more like England, but when there's no longer a need or demand for Asian-only leagues. Well, with us now is Shield Berry, the former editor of Wisden, and Wasim Khan, the first British-born Pakistani to play professional cricket in this country. Why do you think there aren't more Asians playing cricket for in England, or indeed the counties? Well, if you look at the grassroots level to start off with, uh, there's projects such as Chance to Shine, which is trying to reignite cricket in state schools. If you look around the county circuit, um, there's more professional players from ethnic minority backgrounds who are who are playing now. I mean, from five mile radius to where I grew up, 17 professional cricketers have come out of there. So you can always are do. Are you more. saying this isn't a problem? No, I, I'm not saying that at all. You know, what I'm saying is that already. Over it is the last a problem that's years, being addressed. It is being addressed, and um, the ECB are investing quite a lot of um, lot of money now into into grassroots sport. Sure, Barry. Do you think it's a real problem? Yeah, I mean, I think if you go back to the 1950s, when uh, Pakistan immigrants came over, um, through no fault of their own, they were not um, educated, uh, they were not literate, they could not speak English, because the government of Pakistan then has now mm. spent most of its money on the military and intelligence services, not on public health and education. So there was an enormous cultural divide when they came over. Moreover, their Muslim and generosity, hospitality, are enormous uh, priorities in the cultural values of, of, of Islam. So they get to this country, they're given housing, but they're not welcomed into the cricket clubs of this country. And although the gap is narrowing, I don't think it's narrowed quite quickly enough. Do you think there's, to some degree, um I've got to venture on this quite gingerly, but there's some degree there's there's a rather conscious separateness in Asian cricket. Mm. Well, I, I set a, a prime example in Birmingham, a, a local cricket club called Atok Cricket Club, which was set up in a primarily a, an Asian area, and the club itself reflects the demographics of that particular community. I, th I think there's an, an assumption that all Asian cricketers are, you know, are want to play club cricket or are denied or are forced to set up their own cricket clubs because they're not welcomed into white clubs. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't happen in some cases, but what I'm saying is that sometimes, as local communities, they want to play together, play with their uncles and their brothers, and, and not play the formal level of the game that a club, club environment would expect. What do you make of that point? Well, uh, because this is Britain, there are, it's not just a question of race and colour, it's also a question of class. Um, and. Um, the, another problem is that this hugely successful England team, wonderful team, uh, presents a cheque for each county through the broadcasting deals that are done. Of 1.5 million goes to each county club at the start of the year. And it's so much easier to go to your local private schools and to get your agent in the southern hemisphere to send you a few players who've got British or European parentage and to make your county team out of that. So I'm afraid British Asians are underrepresented, well under 10%. And although the middle class Asians have access to cricket, lower class, working class Asians, particularly those in the inner cities, do not you have a You talk particularly class. about uh, people of Pakistani or Bangladeshi origin. Of course, there are many from different, or different cultural and religious backgrounds from the subcontinent. But supposing there was a proper representation of these communities in the England cricket team, how would it change? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, how would it change? Uh, I think you'd find um, there'll be more wristiness in the, batsman, in the, in the batting. You might have better one-day players um, because of the ability to hit over the top. You might have a, more of a chance to win a World Cup. That's as far as the batting's concerned. You might have better spinners, although Graham Swan is fine. Um, they would have a greater diversity. I mean, the, the English team is almost entirely now private school for batting and there are only the bowlers come from the state sector so a diversity it's got to be healthy when you were young did who did you want to play for england when, when i grew up as a as a 12 year old i was spotted in the playground really by chance yeah. and it was through that that i then ended up at uh, warwickshire but many of course would even now i believe i'm told prefer to play for pakistan or india or sri lanka or wherever is mm. that is that a correct impression 
Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think there's still strong ties through uh, sort of families and parents mm. who came from, from those from South Asia. And I think a, sort of, a lot of those children have carried that sort of uh, affinity on and, and they're, they're sort of... But that's self-segregation then, isn't it? it? It is in some ways, but, uh, but I think that, you know, if you look at the England players that have played, or the, the Asian players who've played for England, I think they'd all say that when they pulled on that England shirt, they were proud to play for England. And if they played against Pakistan and India, it didn't matter to them because they actually wanted to perform. Okay, thank you both very much indeed.